Let's talk about the Army's Leadership Requirements Model Competency Develop Others. Army leaders are the stewards of our profession. Our obligation is to the needs of the Army as a whole, even above organizational or personal needs. We must invest our time and effort developing the future leaders of our Army to ensure continued success. The trick is to find the balance between long-term investments, the immediate needs of the mission, and the near-term career needs of our subordinates. In a nutshell, the Army expects us to prioritize leader development at least as high as operations, if not higher. The Army has three primary methods to develop soldiers, institutional, operational, and self-development. Institutional takes place at highly structured settings, such as Ranger School, NCO Academies, and the Command and General Staff College. Operational development is learning on the job, with your unit, guided by supervisors and peers. And self-development is when soldiers identify needs and goals, working towards them on their own, but with the guidance of counselors, coaches, and mentors. The leader's role in developing others is more than creating training plans for groups or instructing leaders' professional development sessions, nested within these methods. That is just a part of our job as trainers. Rather, it is finding ways to create opportunities for development, both formal and informal, to maximize individual and team development within every method. There are three principal development roles leaders fill, counselors, coaches, and mentors. Counseling relationships are typically formal and required by regulation, serving as a center of development. This process does not occur without work. A high quality counseling demands preparation and should include the summary of the situation, assessment of issues, points of discussion, and a draft plan of action. Basically, leaders should plan for counseling like they would any other training event and plan to follow up to ensure success or redirect as needed. Coaching relationships are typically assigned and sometimes voluntary, where the coach has special knowledge or experience in the task or specialty. The coach will directly observe task performance, providing immediate guidance and feedback for performance improvement, working to eliminate barriers to continued development. This differs from counseling as the coach leader ultimately owns their own growth, given support, guidance, and motivation from the coach. Mentorship relationships are voluntary developmental ties between two people where the mentor has experience or knowledge. There is no need for a superior subordinate relationship. In fact, a lieutenant's first and most important mentor will likely be a senior NCO. The key to mentorship is development and maintaining initiative. This is a personal relationship that is not enforced by any formal mechanism. A great mentor goes out of their way to check in, answer questions, and lay the foundations for their protege's success. Finally, leaders can develop others by thinking about and implementing reform. This can include initiatives at any level, from local policy and standing operating procedures to vast modernization efforts. Translating lessons learned, failures, successes, and best practices into standing operating procedures or changes to doctrine is difficult but necessary work. However, change of a word on a piece of paper is not the last step. Leaders must ensure that these reforms are also trained and practiced. An effort the Army has employed is professional writing, and we would like to highlight the Harding Project, led by the Modern War Institute at West Point. The Harding Project aims to reform publishing process, improve thought promotion, make archives more accessible, and tap into existing talent, increasing the number of articles published. We recommend that any leader interested in the state of their profession consider writing for the Harding Project Substack, or consider submitting an article to the branch's professional bulletin. A link to the Substack can be found in the description. For more on developing others and the Army Leaders Requirements Model, I encourage you to visit the Center for Army Leadership website at cal.army.mil. We also recommend a review of Doctrine, ADP 6-22, FM 6-22, as well as ATP 6-22.1, all available on armypubs.army.mil.